A couple of months ago now, I made a video on the extinction of wolves in England and Wales, with the promise that I'll make another video on the rather different tale of their extinction in Scotland, as well as possible reintroductions. Well, it's taken me a while, but I was thinking about that original video today, and thought I'd finally make this part two. So, with that intro out of the way, let's get right into the video. During the reign of James VI, from 1567 to 1623, wolves were considered such a threat in Scotland to travellers that special houses called spittles were constructed on the highways for protection. In Sutherland, in far northern Scotland, wolves at this time dug up graves so frequently that the inhabitants had to resort to burying their dead on the nearby island of Hander rather than the mainland. It is known that wolves were always far more common in the Scottish highlands, like, the, like Sutherland, rather than the lowlands due to the highlands remoteness which ultimately allowed that area to be the last stronghold of the wolf population in the entirety of Britain. Wolves probably became extinct in the Scottish lowlands around the same time they did in England and Wales, during the 13th to 15th centuries. James I passed a law in 1427 requiring three wolf hunts a year between the 25th of April and the 1st of August, coinciding with the wolf's cubbing season similarly to England and Wales. Scottish wolf populations are thought to have peaked during the second half of the 16th century, and in response to this, Mary, Queen of Scots, is known to have hunted wolves in the forest of Atoll, northwest of the city of Perth, in 1563. This didn't do much to quell the population, however, as wolves later caused such damage to the cattle herds of Sutherland that in 1577, the aforementioned James VI made it compulsory to hunt wolves three times a year. This would eventually lead to their extinction, although not for at least a hundred years after this law was put in place. Stories of the killing of the last wolf in Scotland unsurprisingly vary. Official records indicate that the last Scottish wolf was killed by Sir Owen Cameron of Loch Isle in 1680 in the region of Perthshire. However, some tales claim that wolves were present in Scotland until as late as even 1888. Regardless of when exactly the last wolf was killed, it is now a certainty that they no longer exist in modern-day Scotland, but may not stay that way. In 1999, Dr Martin Gorman, a senior lecturer in zoology at Aberdeen University and vice-chairman of the UK Mammal Society, called for a reintroduction of wolves to the Scottish Highlands and English countryside in order to deal with the then 350,000 red deer damaging young trees in commercial forests. Scottish National Heritage considered this request, but shelved the idea following an outcry from sheep farmers. Eight years later, in 2007, British and Norwegian researchers, including experts from the Imperial College London, said that wolf reintroduction into the Scottish Highlands and English countryside would aid in the re-establishment of plants and birds currently hampered by the deer population. Their study also assessed people's attitudes towards the idea of releasing wolves into the wild. While they found the public was generally positive, people living in rural areas were understandably more sensitive, though they were still open to the idea provided they would be reimbursed for livestock losses. Many people to this day are still advocating for the reintroduction of wolves, at least in Scotland, if not England as well, although it remains highly controversial. Many arguments against reintroduction revolve around the potential impacts these animals could have on farming. This is countered, however, by the argument that such a reintroduction could be beneficial for the economy and ecology of the UK, just as it has been in the US. An argument which is backed by the case of Yellowstone National Park. In 1995, wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone National Park, which transformed the ecology of the area allowing forests to regenerate and biodiversity to increase. Wolf-related tourism also brings $35.5 million annually to the state of Wyoming. Despite this strong argument, it unfortunately seems such a reintroduction won't be seriously considered or possibly attempted for quite some time now, due to the possible downsides and controversial nature of it, especially among those living in the rural areas where the wolves would actually be reintroduced. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Also, thank you very much if you voted on the recent poll I made. Since the results were a bit split, I think what I'm going to try to do is guarantee at least one 15 to 20 minute video per week and possibly do a few smaller ones like this if I feel like it or have time. But anyways, with that out of the way, 
Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are, and I hope to see you in the next one.